Behind every incredible student, there is always an incredible teacher, and the world of fighter pilots is no different. From planes dating back to the start of the jet age, like French Magister or the British Provost, to modern aircraft like the Italian Master or the Taiwanese Brave Eagle, a high-quality, high-powered training jet is absolutely essential to teach the pilots of tomorrow. From the aces, to the flight nerds, to the mavericks, and beyond, every great modern military aviator got their start behind the stick of one such aircraft. And without the lessons taught in and by those planes, the feats those pilots pulled off in their flying careers would have been all but impossible. But across the entire world of military aviation, there is one grizzled old teacher that stands head and shoulders above the rest. Hailing from the Czech Republic, and with a memory stretching back all the way to when its home was still called Czechoslovakia, the L-39 Albatross is an instructor unparalleled. With thousands in circulation across the world still in service to dozens of air forces more than half a century after it first entered service, and still rolling off the production line today, there is no teacher of aviation more esteemed than the Albatross, and none so deserving of the respect and admiration that it has earned. And on today's episode of Mega Projects, we're going to be getting to know the Albatross in all its glory, instructing generation after generation of pilots, and even getting a taste of battle itself. The aircraft that would eventually grow into the Albatross was a successor to an older icon of Czechoslovak aviation, the L-29 Delfin, or Dolphin in English. Produced by the aerospace manufacturer Aero Vorohody, the Dolphin was Czechoslovakia's first locally designed, locally produced jet aircraft, and by the time it was built, it was by far the biggest aerial industrial program to take place anywhere east of the Iron Curtain, other than in the Soviet Union proper. The Dolphin was an immensely successful aircraft in its time, with over 3,600 built and shipped around the world beginning in 1963, primarily for use as the Soviet Air Force's standard jet trainer. It even picked up a few combat kills during action in Nigeria, Egypt, and allegedly Georgia. But it was also built at a time when jet technology was advancing rapidly from decade to decade, and the underpowered engines and rather dinky feel of the Dolphin aircraft came to badly represent the sheer intensity of flying a proper fighter jet. Now, the goal, of course, wasn't to terrify a new pilot, but they deserved to know what they were in for, and both in terms of its capabilities and its onboard technology, the Dolphin wasn't going to cut it for very long. Just before we continue with today's video, a quick word from our longtime and fantastic sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Have you ever felt yourself traveling, sitting in a local hotel for the night, and you want to watch a movie or show on Netflix to pass the time? Well, how many times has it happened that you open up Netflix and it's like it's not available in this region? Well, don't worry about that, because with Surfshark, you just open up the app, you tap on connect, and you'll be able to log on to internet anywhere in the world and get all the selection that you could hope for. Or maybe a movie is only available on Netflix in America, and you're not in America. Well, not a problem with Surfshark. Just activate, change your virtual location, and uh, it's just as easy as that, isn't it? Plus also, browsing the internet can be risky. Your personal data is always out there. But fret not, as privacy is the name of the game with Surfshark, and they've got you covered. Surf the web to your heart's content, and rest easy knowing that Surfshark has your data encrypted and safe from all of those who want to steal it. Sit back, relax, enjoy your vacation, enjoy that movie you're watching on Netflix, thanks to the best VPN around. And if you act now, you can get an extra three months for free. Secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter promo code MEGA for three months free at surfshark.deal slash MEGA. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring. And now back to today's video. Naturally, Aero Vodohody was quick to begin work on a successor aircraft. Under the leadership of designer Jan Vlerchek, the company dropped plans for a two-seater, single-engine aircraft that would be capable of filling a training role not just in the Soviet Union, but across the world in nations that sought to align themselves with the Soviets. The aircraft was to be a turbofan-powered trainer, the first in the world to hold that distinction, and it was meant to be a reasonable allegory to fighter aircraft like the MiG series and the Sukhoi series. It was to be a modular aircraft, ensuring that any nation that wanted to use it would be able to modify and upgrade it as they saw fit, and it was to be equipped with modern avionics technology over and above anything the L-29 had on board. Their eventual prototype took its first flight in November 1968, and although the plane was beset by delays because of design issues in its air intake, it was able to enter service with the Czechoslovakian Air Force not long after.
The albatross comes in at a nose to tail length of just over 12 meters, nearly 40 feet, with a wingspan of 9.5 meters or 31 feet. Its wide, perpendicular wings make it a stable and nimble craft in subsonic flight, and its tail, unusually tall for a fighter of this type, is equipped with a large inset rudder that further increases its handling. The aircraft sits at an empty weight of just under 3,500 kilograms, that's about 4 tons, and on its internal fuel, it's got a range of 1,100 kilometers or 680 miles. The Albatross can hit a top speed of 750 kilometers per hour or 470 miles per hour when flying as intended, but it can go quite a bit faster when taken into powered dives, giving it a never exceed speed all the way up to 980 kilometers per hour or 610 miles per hour. Running on internal fuel only, it can fly up to two and a half hours at a time, with that time increasing to almost four hours when using drop tanks. It's got a relatively low service ceiling of 11,000 meters or 36,000 feet, and a relatively low climb rate of 21 meters per second or 4,100 feet per minute. But as a small, light plane, it also doesn't require much room to take off, with runways of under 2,200 feet or 650 meters being long enough to facilitate both takeoff and landing. And when it comes to the plane's armament, it obviously won't be carrying any heavy weapons during most training missions, but as we're about to see, it's also capable of flying in an attack role. Whether configured for training or combat, it can carry up to two fuel drop tanks underneath its wings, or it can carry up to 1,100 kilograms or nearly 2,500 pounds of weapons on four underwing hard points. Various nations have fitted all manner of lethal weaponry onto their Albatross models, from bombs to rocket pods to pod-mounted cannons, and it's capable of carrying reconnaissance pods as well. However, it is not equipped with wingtip pylons and could only carry limited options when it comes to air-to-air -air missiles. It also has one suite of weapons that's actually not supposed to be used against an external target, but instead for trainer to use against trainee. Specifically, a whole array of levers and buttons that will force the jet's various systems to suddenly fail without warning. The Albatross is built to slot neatly into a given nation's air force, with low maintenance costs, low training demands for maintenance staff, quick turnaround times between flights, and enough resilience, simplicity, and structural integrity that if some poor trainee happens to snap off the landing gear and belly out on the tarmac, the plane won't be a complete loss. It's designed to operate from airstrips that may be a far cry from what you'd find on a proper military base, including anything from hard-packed desert terrain to frozen lake beds, and it's intended to be landed at particularly low speeds, further reducing the risk that the whole apparatus might smash into the ground. Its throttle is designed with ease of use in mind, and it's been built into a range of flight simulator technology, with the company in ground tools and equipment built to mimic the parts that you'd find on board the craft. It features trainer and student seats in tandem in a cockpit using separate canopies, with the rear seat set up so that the instructor can clearly see the trainee's hands moving across the controls. The cockpit is only partially pressurized, requiring the installation of an onboard oxygen generating system, which forces both trainer and pilot to wear an oxygen mask above a certain altitude, but it's also equipped with a mission computer, a heads-up display, a multifunctional display, data computers, a friend or foe transponder, a tactical air navigation system, and a range of other bells and whistles that a pilot will expect to find in the fighter aircraft that they'll later be using in their careers. These instruments are presented in a layout and cockpit shape that's designed to mirror those of the most common Soviet aircraft of the time. The Albatross is equipped with a single Ivchenko AI-25TL turbofan engine with air intakes just behind the cockpit. It's got enough power to give it that powerful plane feel, but not nearly enough that a pilot risks hitting the wrong button and catapulting themselves and their poor instructors into the stratosphere. Overall, the Albatross is designed to be resilient to stupidity, forgiving of operator error, and finely tuned enough that it can be made easier or more difficult to handle based on what a flight instructor demands of their trainee. It's built to roll with the punches, including the unexpected ones, and ensure that everybody who climbs aboard is going to finish their flight with all of their fingers and toes still intact. For trainees who need to be babied, the Albatross can and will baby them. For trainees who need to be pushed, the Albatross can keep up with an instructor's demands and does plenty of tricks up its sleeves. Piloting a combat aircraft will never be easy, no matter the aircraft or the person behind the stick, but all things considered, the Albatross is a fantastic gateway plane to get its students in shape for the absolute beasts of aerial combat that will come next. It would take a rather long time to run through all of the individual operators of the Albatross, both current and historic, so instead we'll run through some of the most notable. As the Hallmark Jet Trainer aircraft of the Soviet Union, the Albatross was intentionally made easy to acquire for nations that chose to stand alongside the Soviets during the Cold War, and those ties are plain to see even today. 
For those nations that used to fly the Albatross but don't anymore, Czechoslovakia flew 77, Libya flew 180 or more, East Germany flew 54, Thailand flew 37, Romania flew 32, Iraq 81, Hungary 20, Chad 11, Afghanistan 26. But the Soviet Union led the pack by far with 2,080 of the planes in Soviet service at one time or another. When it comes to today's operators, Russia is out in front with 181, Syria flies 61, Algeria flies 55, Ukraine 47, Yemen 28, Cuba 26, Vietnam 25, Kazakhstan 17, Azerbaijan and Belarus each have 12, Georgia, Nigeria, Uganda have 8, and the nation of Mozambique has got one delivered by Russia in 2022. We're also missing dozens of other nations who operate a small handful of the planes, including at least two sub-state actors, the restive Russian region of Chechnya, and the partially recognized breakaway Georgian Republic of Abkhazia, operating their own L-39 aircraft independently from the authority of their respective national governments. Hundreds of others have found their way into the collections of private owners, largely in the United States, who generally consider the craft a pleasure to fly and particularly enjoy the ease with which it handles most basic acrobatic maneuvers. For the most part, the L-39 is used in a trainer role, which we trust you can probably imagine pretty well, and which doesn't really vary that much from nation to nation. Regardless of where a given albatross operates, there's probably going to be a student pilot holding the stick and a flight instructor holding on to the sides of the aircraft and wondering why they chose such a nausea-inducing profession. But with thousands in service around the world, and all of them having the capability to attach and use weaponry, a good number of albatrosses have also found their way into a combat role. Some of the Albatross's earliest combat action came in Libya when, during the years of the Chadian-Libyan conflict, the Gaddafi regime stationed L-39s at a forward airbase. Near the close of the war, several of the aircraft were captured and a few were destroyed, with those planes listed in some accounts as having been shot down. Around that same time, a bunch of L-39s were found disassembled and being sent to Nicaragua to help fight a war against the US-backed Contras. In Syria, armed albatross aircraft took a central role through a decade of civil war in the 2010s on the front lines in counterinsurgent operations against Syria's mess of rebel groups. Many albatross planes have been shot down over the course of the war, and a couple of them were temporarily captured and even flown by Islamist insurgent forces. One was shot down by a Turkish F-16 over northern Syria in 2020. Iraq had several of its albatross planes destroyed during the US-led coalition invasion of 2003, although none were able to put up a fight against invading forces. And in Azerbaijan, they were used as attack planes in Nagorno-Karabakh during the 80s and 90s, although several were known to have been shot down. A similar story went down in Afghanistan, where the albatross was used by the Taliban in air operations against the Afghan Northern Alliance. In Chechnya, dozens of Chechen-owned L-39s were destroyed in the region's civil wars against Russia, and largely due to Russian concerns that the L-39 could be stuffed with explosives and flown kamikaze-style into Russian nuclear power plants. Finally, L-39 planes were flown and lost by Abkhazian separatists during the 1990s in their war against Georgian forces. Most recently, the Albatross has seen combat operations during the ongoing war in Ukraine. In the first hours of Russia's full-scale invasion, a Ukrainian L-39 was shot down by a Russian aircraft in an incident that saw its pilot posthumously awarded the decoration of Hero of Ukraine. Over a year later, in August 2023, two L-39s would collide during a combat mission, killing a pilot on board, who had been a leading voice in trying to get Western nations to supply Ukraine with F-16s. So for such a ubiquitous plane, it should be no surprise that a wide range of albatross variants have proliferated with time, some of which have been much more successful than others. Ukraine got a version in the early 2020s featuring far more components. Czechoslovakia made a tug version that could tow targets behind it on a mile long cable. Thailand got a version with integrated Israeli avionics rather than the usual ones. And Iraq got a version specifically meant for aerial combat, which was shopped around to a variety of bars after Iraq reported positive results. Then, a complete revision of the jet was offered to export customers in the form of the Super Albatross, featuring a strengthened fuselage, a far better engine, and a cockpit that was much more appropriate for the 80s and 90s. Only 80 or so of the planes would be made in service in the Czech Republic, Egypt, and Tunisia, although it would see some frontline service under Tunisia in the first Libyan civil war and in attack missions against militants linked to al-Qaeda. Finally, there was the L-159 Alka, a 21st century direct descendant of the Albatross that spent just three years in full service with the Czech Air Force before most of its 72 aircraft were sold off. Iraq used a few against the Islamic State, and two dozen of them are in the control of an American company called Draken International, which, if you call their number, will apparently hook you up with as many fighter planes as you need, including F-16s, because, well, that's the crazy world that we live in.
Most important among all of the Albatross's later variants is the L39NG or Next Generation. Done as a partnership between the aforementioned Drake and International, the jet engine manufacturer called Williams International, and Aero Vorahori, the Next Generation Albatross is meant to both massively extend the lifespan of current Albatross aircraft and kick off a new production line of Albatross models that, if successful, will ensure that the aircraft remains the world's premier jet trainer for decades. The Albatross NG is a program in two stages. Stage 1 offers countries who've already got an Albatross fleet the opportunity to install a modern turbofan engine and suite of avionics that put it on par with modern aircraft. While the engine is nearly identical in terms of thrust to the one on the original Albatross jets, it's far more fuel efficient and far more evolved than that that came before it. Stage 2 involves the production of a whole new line of aircraft, possibly scavenging parts that were used in Stage 1 updates to an older Albatross. That is to say that the older model will get a new engine and avionics, and when it eventually kicks the bucket, those engine and avionics will go right into the new aircraft, ready to take the place of the old one. The new model aircraft has already taken its maiden flight all the way back in 2018, and the design has been signed off by the Czech Defense Ministry as being in alignment with the military standards of all of NATO. The Stage 2 fighter is a very impressive beast, and while it has roughly the same outward dimensions of a vintage albatross, length 12 meters, 39 and a half feet, wingspan 9 and a half meters, 31 feet, a two-seater cockpit, and a really big tail, it's also packing a whole lot more under the hood. At an empty weight of 3,100 kilograms, or under three and a half tons, it can fly at a maximum speed of 900 kilometers an hour, 560 miles per hour, a good bit faster than the vintage edition. It's also got a much better range, 2,590 kilometers, or 1,610 miles, and nearly double the flight endurance at four hours and 30 minutes on its own internal fuel alone. It's also got a slightly higher service ceiling at 11,500 meters, or about 37,700 feet, a slightly better rate of climb at 23 rather than 21 meters a second, and an avionic suite that would make its predecessor look like a Neanderthal in comparison. Its wingtips are able to carry ordnance as well as external fuel pods, and it's got a total of five hardpoints, with the ability to carry all the laser-guided bombs and rockets, free-falling bombs, gun pods, and air-to-air -air missiles that a battle-crazed Czech fighter pilot could ever ask for. Although it's early yet, the Albatross New Generation program is already starting to take off. A Czech flight school placed the inaugural order for a replacement Stage 2 aircraft. The Draken company intends to purchase up to six upgrades for its L-39 display team. Another American company has ordered 12 for the Farnborough Air Show. Portugal is getting at least a dozen. Vietnam is getting at least a dozen. Ghana wants six. Hungary wants 12, including four in a special reconnaissance version that has yet to be revealed. With NATO nations in Europe currently undergoing this long, expensive process of remilitarization, the tested and time-proven Albatross is likely to be a premier choice as a trainer aircraft when more and more countries start shopping around, especially if a sophisticated modern version is available to do the same basic work. With the rise of the new generation line of Albatross aircraft, it seems entirely likely that this particular brand of Warbird will remain in the skies for a very long time. Older model planes are still some of the most common jet trainers that you're likely to see in any modern air force, and the new models have the potential to stand alongside any modern training aircraft. If the success of this second wave of Albatross planes is anything like the success of the Generation 1, then it's well within the realm of possibility that the Albatross line could end up training a whole century's worth of pilots, or maybe even more. And if a century of work sounds like a daunting undertaking, then never fear, because the Albatross is already more than halfway to the finish line.